everybody, and welcome to another stream on the Nitsudge Nobel Twitch channel. Uh, uh, excuse me, why aren't you working? Hello, hello everybody, hello. Hello, and welcome to another live stream. I think I need to crank up my game. Hello, hello everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another live stream on the Nitsudge Nobel YouTube channel, or Twitch channel. Eh. Yeah, let's start over. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another live stream on the Nitsudge Nobel Twitch channel. My name is Nitsudge, and today we're starting the week off right with some Mario Maker madness. So, we're gonna head, we're gonna head into the course world to get things started off, since we, uh, don't have anyone in the chat yet to uh, request courses. No, I would not like to view them now. And we will just throw ourselves into Endless Challenge. Game audio is really weak. Alright, so I'm gonna crank up the gain a little bit more. Just so I uh I sound better. Alright. All right, I hope this sounds pretty good. Um, all right, so we're uh, we're about to get going on this. All right, so let's do this. That was easy. So this is an auto scroller, right? Eh? Um I don't think that's what auto scroller means. I think you've misused the Oh, there's the auto scroller. Well, um that was undesirable. Mario does that oh, shaky scared when he's uh, he's held crouched down under a bullet bill because because uh, being scared of a massive bullet flying at you does not feel like the irrational coward thing 
Actually, frankly, not being scared of it seems fairly irrational, because giant bullet. say that, well, courage is a lack of fear. No, courage is specifically the presence of bravery. The two are not necessarily mutually exclusive. See, if you're not afraid, then you cannot be brave. Meanwhile, if you're not willing to stand up in the face of fear, you don't have courage. Or bravery. Whatever you want to call it. One is a prerequisite for the other. Hey, hello, we have a, uh, a new follower. Thank you. Implore34 for following. Feel free to uh, come hang out with us in the comments. Um, or the chat, I should say. Uh, as well, this is a request stream, so if you have Mario Maker 2 levels you'd like to see me play, then uh, feel free to submit them into the comments. We're always happy to have new people around to hang out with, so... Shit. <laughs> you can see what I was trying to go for there. huge fan of the cat suit in all honesty um on a mechanical level actually more than anything i find it much inferior to uh, previous costumes oh well thank you for coming and check it out i uh, i hope you find this uh, entertaining So, um, yeah, we're <coughs> just playing some uh, Mario Maker 2. Um, playing through Endless, but uh, if we get requests in chat, then uh, that's actually what I'd uh, much rather be playing. I'm glad you found us at Toby's server, because... Uh, Otherwise, I wouldn't know where you were coming from, in all honesty. Other than, you know, just finding us on Twitch. I do not like the cat suit. Maybe it's just Mario Maker 2's particular implementation of it, but, um... It seems like a particularly bad implementation of the idea that it's... That it is. I'm just kind of curious if there's... Hey, that was worth climbing up there for. Hmm. 
Ah, damn it. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm glad you decided to materialize here at our stream. Just gotta quickly take a sip of water here. Was that boss fight taken out pretty easily in all honesty. Ah dang it. Okay, this doesn't look... I think this is one of the, um... Oh, well, outside of the, uh, work thing, you know. Things are going pretty well. How's your day going, Im Implored? I implored Implored to tell me how his day was going. Navidad in Mario. Navidad in Mario. I'm assuming that means Christmas in Mario. Oh yes, Pikmin 4 is coming out. That <clears throat> that's been on my mind lately. I really can't wait for that to come out. Um. It will technically be my first Pikmin game. Um, I played the demo for Pikmin 3, and I thought, oh, this is really fun. I really want to give uh, another one of these Pikmin games a go. And I thought about uh, purchasing the full Pikmin 3. And literally, half an hour before I planned on purchasing it, there was the Nintendo Direct. And I, I thought, oh, this will be neat. And then it's like, oh, Pikmin 4 is coming out next year. Okay. So, um... I, uh, I didn't play any more than the demo. But I'm really quite excited for Pikmin uh, 4 to come out, given how much I enjoyed Pikmin 3. Yeah, 
off stream, I've actually been replaying um, Breath of the Wild as well. Um, in part because, you know, uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out. This is kind of a quite this is actually quite an interesting level. <laughs> ah. I see. Bacon, bacon videos playing uh, Arceus. Yeah, I know there are quite a lot of games coming out. Um, uh, you've got uh, yeah, you've got Have a Nice Death um, coming out in a couple days. I have a feeling this is not how you're supposed to try and kill the boss. Yeah, you've got Have a Nice Death. Um, you've got, uh, so far this year, I think you've got uh, Cereza and the Lost Demons, though that... Cereza and the Lost Demon, I think, um, comes out uh, in not too long. You've got, or has already come out, I'm not sure. You've got Have a Nice Death. You've got Pikmin 4. You've got Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, we've got, you know, I think I've already said Pikmin 4, but we've got Pikmin 4. You know, like, Nintendo's got a pretty good lineup. Yeah, um, Blanc just came out not that long ago. Um, I'm not sure if you've been following that one, but if you've watched any of the uh, the directs, Blanc. Has been in them uh, frequently. And uh, what's kind of funny is that it's made by the same company that makes Gears of War. Which is like such an odd juxtaposition. You haven't heard of Blanc? Okay. So, um, Blanc is a, um, co-op puzzle game. Whereas you, where you play as a, um, a, uh, a fawn and a fox in a, um, black and white stylized world uh, solving puzzles. And it honestly looks like super adorable. And um, it's on my list of games to uh, pick up and play on stream. But with 
obviously, you know what happening, you know, so. I don't really have the, uh, the money spare right now to, uh, to do anything like that, but I've, uh, I've put in for a couple of places, so I'll soon have the money for, uh, games like that. You know what? I can probably pull Blanc up on the news here. Because I thought I saw it in here. Ah. Yeah, this is Blanc. The, um, the bit of the gameplay that they show, um, oh, it is available now. The, um, the bit of the gameplay that they, you know, I'm half curious how much money it actually is, because if it's not a huge amount, then I, uh, I might have the money for it, and I might actually switch what I'm playing on stream to that. Um, uh, it's 20 bucks. I don't hugely have the money for it. Um, yes, it is really cute. Um, the, um, the one thing I also like about it is it sort of looks a lot like the um, old Traveler's Tale Lego game. Because um, it's all about puzzle solving, which um, at least the older ones, I'm not sure about the newer ones, um, they were full of puzzle solving and uh, were very cooperative. Whereas, nowadays, multiplayer games tend to lean more towards, um, being competitive. But, like, the LEGO games always were cooperative, and, um, like, uh, Mario Maker- uh, not Mario Maker, um... Mario Galaxy, when you had, uh, two people playing. It was, uh, cooperative. Hey, got the key. Nice. Oh, great. I've got to kill him. So did I. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I played uh, Lego Star Wars um, uh, and uh, you know, the original uh, one, which was uh, covered uh, 4, 5, and 6. Then I played through the Clone Wars one. Um, let's see. Then I did the... Um, we had the Pirates of the Caribbean for the Wii. We still have Pirates of the Caribbean for the Wii. If I ever get a, um... If I ever get my own personal Wii U, uh, as opposed to the one that my family sort of has kicking around in it, um, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely stream that at some point. Because, uh, you know, the Wii has, uh, the Wii U can play Wii games, and I can stream it over HDMI. Uh, let's see, I did Lord of the Rings, uh, with my family, with my brother as well. 
there were a couple more, but they're escaping my mind right now. Um, but yeah, all of them. Uh, back in the day, I played them to 100% uh, completion with my uh, with my dad and my brother. We don't really do stuff like that anymore, and I think it's because a lot of games aren't built for that anymore. Um, one thing I really want to do is um, get the... Uh, yeah, yeah, there was uh, Lego Batman. There were actually a couple Lego Batman games. I had both of them. Uh, I can't believe I forgot about those. But those were, uh, those were a good bit of fun. Yeah, there aren't a huge number of games that are really like the Lego games. And, um, I think it's kind of to the games industry's detriment. Because the Lego games were the kind of things, like, sure, they were kiddie and childish, you know, but they were the kind of thing that a parent could sit down and play with a kid, and they knew that it wouldn't be too much for them, but they also knew that they could play it with their kid and spend time with them. And that, I think, is something that is sorely lacking in the modern games industry, are those cooperative fun experiences. Yeah, the uh, Lego Lord of the Rings and the Lego Hobbit were uh, were good as well. I've uh, I've done both of them. I've got to get a Wii U one of these days. That way I can uh, can play Wii games on stream. Because there are so many great games from that point in history. Because think about it, the Wii is a decade old at this point, and there are so many great games that haven't gotten republished. From what I've heard, Lego, um, Lego Jurassic Park and Lego City Undercover, as games were, um, not particularly well received. Uh, Endless Ocean does not sound familiar. Um, uh, what system was it on? Because I might, because I might not have, depending, because um, I didn't have a huge amount of systems growing up.
the Wii. Uh, it doesn't sound familiar, no. Um... However, I do actually have a, uh, a Wii, so I could either uh, get a disc, or if it was on the eShop... Oh, it even got a sequel. Okay. Yeah, well, if it was uh, if it was on the Wii, um, I can uh, acquire it through um, legal means. <clears throat> you know, I can uh, I can uh, buy the disc or uh, find someone with an SD card where they um, they got the uh, eShop thing on it, and I can just pop it on my Wii. There we go. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, the Wii was my first console. We got it when I when it actually we got it when it first came out. Um, so, uh, but uh, we didn't get games for it all that regularly. Like we had the Lego games for it, um, and we had like uh, the obvious ones that everyone with a Wii had, like um, you know, Wii Sports and um, like Mario Kart Wii. But, like, I've only played through, like, even New Super Mario Bros. Wii as an adult. Well, okay, yeah, I would call the DS a handheld, not a console, but I, uh, I guess if we're counting the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the DS, then I guess we'd also count the Game Boy Advanced, which would technically make the Game Boy Advanced my first console. In fact, I still actually got, um, my, uh, original Game Boy and all the games I got for it, and... Sorry, when I say original Game Boy, it is actually Game Boy Advanced SP, not a OG Game Boy. No, nah, no, nah, it's okay, you know. I've actually got my, um, my Game Boy Advanced SP from, uh... When I was a kid, and my DS, and the uh, Wii that my uh, my parents got for the family, because it was uh, busted, and I managed to fix it. Um, because they just wanted to throw it out. So when I uh, I moved, I acquired it with me. My, uh, my parents still have and regularly used a Wii U, um, meaning that won't that it won't su that it won't suffer uh, nandrot, which is uh, which is nice. Thank you. 
That's twice now I've died in the exact same manner. So hey, I guess I'm pretty smooth brain too. <laughs> This is a crap level. I hate these levels where it literally is like, ah, oh, we're gonna set a goal, an easy goal, but it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but it's actually not a little bit difficult. I wish I had my button. Because that was easy. I do actually have uh, an OG that was easy button. hate these kinds of levels. Oh, okay. So it's not all that oh, okay. It wasn't all that effects heavy, it was just pointless. A lot harder to be angry at something just pointless. Alright, well, we've been live for almost um, 45 minutes here, so after this level, I think I'm going to switch up what we're playing for Mario Madness. of levels like that. So, um, I'm going to switch what I'm playing for Mario Madness. However, I will let you, chat decide what we're playing for Mario Madness. So, do you want me to play some Mario Sunshine? Do you want to pay, um, watch me play Mario Galaxy? Do you want to watch me play some Mario 64? It's all up to you. Uh, let's see, I've got 
Mario, I've got Mario Odyssey, I've got Mario N64, I've got Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy that I can play. I can also play more Mario Maker 2 if that's what you'd like. Okay, Mario Sunshine it is. After I finish up this level. And we're going to drop onto that X. Alright, chat, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with some Mario Sunshine. Please stick around.
and we're back with some Mario Sunshine as part of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I'm going to turn that gameplay audio up even more because it is so darn quiet. And we're back on the save that I uh, finished not too long ago. And by finished, I mean I beat the game. I didn't 100% it. Let me just... Ah, there we go. So why change it? <laughs> I didn't do much with the flying Pikmin in uh, Okay, I can't be arsed to figure out how the hell that works again Let's see if there's anything we need to do in here. As far as stars go. No, we've done all eight from there. Yeah, let's try the sandbird again. There we go. I knew there was a way to get a sunshine from one of them. Uh, 
uh, just one sec. Uh, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Just, uh, just one of my, uh, roommates coming in to, uh, let me know about something. Yeah, let's save and continue. Um, I more meant to stay on the level, but okay, that works for me. gotta be levels that I just haven't... But man, I can't figure out this... There's gotta be a shine somewhere around here for it to be making the noise. I reckon it ain't gonna be the one I've already gotten. My goodness, I am not doing well at this. <laughs> Yellow's got better hand.
<laughs> I'm just trying to find a level with shines I haven't got yet. Maybe there's a better way to... No, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not what I'm looking for. Peon to village. Okay, that's one that I haven't done yet. At least not gotten all eight on. So let's see if we can find something. Here, I wonder. I'm gonna have to look up where Pianta Village is, because I forgot. That's where Pianta Village is. Thank you. 
Okay, this should take us to beyond the village. Fluff Festival Coin Hunt, okay. Check the controls. Okay. So I think I've got to find. One thing I will say about Mario Sunshine is that its camera control is not aged particularly well. that it isn't fun, I had quite a lot of fun beating it, but... Just coming off of more modern games like Splatoon, the, uh, the camera controls have not aged very well, because we control cameras a bit differently now. Now that can sometimes make older games age worse. We do X or Y or Z differently now, and um, so it's different. Sometimes it's better in older games, sometimes it's worse.
Okay, so that's two of eight. Will we find any down here? I wonder. Oh, I wonder, 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 who wrote the book I wrote? I don't know. And I don't know why that popped into my head. Oh, thank you. Uh, technically, though, it's not a, uh, a protogen or even a, uh, a primogen. Um, protogens and primogens are specifically a thing made by <clears throat> uh, a particular group, um, and I have neither approval for a primogen, and technically as a shark, it would be a primogen, uh, since protogens are exclusively mammalian. Uh, and B, I'm, uh, I'm not sticking to the lore. So, technically, I'm just a screen-faced furboy. But, uh, but yeah, there is a lot of uh, protogen inspiration in it. Uh, mostly on an aesthetic level. Oh, I definitely do like it quite a bit. I mean, it'd be kind of weird if I didn't, seeing as I'm the one who made it, so... No red coins? Okay. I don't know why, but some instinct in me said, oh, there'll be red coins up here. Ah, there's where another coin is. It's up there, okay.
Glad my instinct about leaves weren't entirely wrong. Just pegged the wrong spot. Yeah, closed species aren't a thing I particularly care for. Um, I uh, I remember um, back when uh, when Deviant Art was new, I was uploading some uh, old D and D art that I'd I'd uh, done in uh, years gone by when I was much younger, and uh, someone commented, "Oh, hey, this is one of those," and I went, uh, "Those came out like." three years after I did this, you can see on the date that's on the bottom of the image when I made it, and um, they told me I should take a long walk off a short pier, um, because I said, yeah, I'm not taking down something I drew when I was, like, this old, because this thing that came out after it is technically what it is, and it's like, could I technically claim that this person ripped me off? Well, I couldn't because my thing was uploaded to the internet, like, years later. After they'd done it, but, you know, I'd come up with the concept of it on my own. Um, yeah, and when I message the creator, and I'm like, hey, so I, I made this uh, bit of art back, like, years before you did any of this, but, um... I got someone telling me that I should, uh, I should, uh, take a long walk off a short pier for having used your intellectual property when, you know, I didn't even know this existed until, like, this came up, and I drew this for a D&D campaign, like, you know, years before you posted your thing. So, maybe you could tell some of your fans to cool their jets a little bit? And the um, person who had made the uh, the supposedly closed species that I had ripped off was like, well, you know, if you really want an official one, you should really buy one. And I'm like, I don't want an official one. This is a thing I drew when I was like eight, or not eight, um, ten. So I'm not paying for a thing I came up with the concept of when I was, you know, a small child. You know. You know, it can't be particularly original if, like, two people could independently come up with the idea. Kind of had. Uh... <laughs> well, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So from then on, I've had little to no respect for those species. Because, like, it became clear to me that most of the closed species stuff was just, you know, just, just sort of a form of elitism. And I'm not going to play into someone's elitist ideas. And, um, 
I know especially back in the day, I'm not sure if this is true anymore, but the uh, person responsible for the uh, protogens and primogens was particularly litigious with people making uh, them unofficially, especially with the supposedly, um, like, um, uh, rare, more special and unique primogens, and saying, oh, you know, these are really special, and, you know, I don't want them getting ruined by everyone having one, and it's like, Firstly, only people who want them are gonna get the are gonna make them in the first place, even if they were an open species. You know. But secondly, charging like a few hundred to a few thousand dollars so you can have a character that they've decided what goes on it. Like, it's one thing if someone else wants to sell their character and they set their price for whatever. But when you're charging for a slot to have a member of a species, like, That's, that's to me a, a whole, a whole nother thing that's, um, like, inappropriate. So get it too, like you created like this thing, right? Like I've got a, a character called Brickbot. You know. But there is one Brickbot. I wouldn't go getting annoyed with people for coming up with Brickbot-esque characters. Because for one, the concept isn't, you know, super original. And two, in what way is it any of my business what someone wants to do with their own robot creations? You know? Especially because, you know, art doesn't exist and can't exist in a vacuum. And in the process of making BrickBot, I was necessarily inspired by things, you know, like... Um, Um, for example, like, uh, you know how people do, like, those, um, TV head guys? Well, that's undeniably a small source of inspiration. But there's also, you know, uh, a small amount of, uh, inspiration from the Commodore 64, um, in the, uh, the screen, uh, the way the screen itself looks, you know, like, But there's also, you know, the internal way that the robot would functionally work, and it's like, well, hey, I didn't come up with any of these individual parts, I just happened to arrange them in a unique way. You know, but that doesn't mean that I should, for, you know, in perpetuity, have all rights to define what goes on with those particular arrangements of parts. Frankly, in general, I probably shouldn't have rights to what happens to those unique assemblage of parts outside of my own particular character.
that's that's my personal take on this whole closed species thing. It doesn't mean, by the way, that everyone should have the exact same take I do, or that mine is necessarily the most correct take either. It's just my particular take on it. So anyway. You know, like, well, there is one take on closed species that I saw that actually made sense. Um, for someone defending their closed species. And it was um, someone talking about how they had made a particular one-off species for a, uh, a book. And they had spent a lot of time in the uh, R&D and design work for it. But... The species is literally a species of one. If you made another thing that would like that was like it, it would be like it, but it wouldn't be it. And it's like that I can get too, because it's like, okay, well you've made a species of one. You know, you can copy the visual elements of it and it'll look the way it looks. But it won't be the same thing because it was made for a specific setting and a specific story and stuff like that. And at that point, it's like, well, okay. It's like the alien or predator. You know, they're, they're a one-off. Or like Metroid. Or the Chozo, right? You know, outside of those settings, they're just sort of a weird alien thing, or... Okay, a weird alien thing. Or a weird alien thing. Or a weird alien thing, right? But if you made a sort of sci-fi bird person, you've just made a sci-fi bird person. You haven't made a Chozo. You know, because Chozo are a very specific thing. And I think when, um... When people talk about, oh, this is a closed species, what they've done is they've decided that a broad aesthetic design belongs to them now. And they're going to endeavor to protect said very broad aesthetic design. For reasons that are just utterly beyond me. Like, it'd be one thing if I was trying to copy, like, lore from Protogens and getting flack for being, like, for it. Because it's like, hey, well, this is my sort of closed story thing. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's what it's, what it's like. It's actually funny that you say toaster because... My shark is literally called Toaster. I don't know why, I just thought it was a funny name for him while I was working on him.
Nya. Like, I get wanting to protect a story element. But it'd be like if someone said, ah, ah, the idea of creating a shark cat is an entirely unique idea, and therefore no one may ever use it again. I've actually got an idea for a, uh, a furry species. It would be an uh, open one, uh, because, well, I've got my feelings about closed species. Um called uh, citrus sharks so entirely open species anyone can can use them they have citrus fruit details that's all they have so like i like putting ear fins on sharks because i think that's cute right so the ear fins would be you know, citrus slices. And the tail would be... Yeah. Yeah, it would be as sensical as saying, well, you can't do your sharks this specific way because I've decided that this specific combination of shark anthropomorphization is, is my thing, and it's mine, and I'll be litigious and make my people who like my sharks come after you and it's like well that's that's ridiculous but it's kind of funny you mention sharks because i've literally got citrus sharks as an idea where um so i like putting ear fins on sharks because one i think it's cute but you know two i think it's funny but where they're um they're the ear fins that i like to put on them and their um their tail would actually be like citrus fruit I don't know why, I just think it's a cute idea. You know, so like if anyone makes one, hey, that's neat. I wouldn't want to go, hey, this is mine, you can only make approved citrus tracks. You know, because that would be just utterly ridiculous. You know, like, I want someone to make an orange creamsicle citrus shark because they went <laughs> orange creamsicle, <laughs> orange is a fruit, and this is a citrus shark, and orange is a citrus fruit. So, <laughs> orange creamsicle is a citrus shark. Like I don't know, that just seems funny to me. You know, I'd love to see someone do that. No backstory, no, no lore, just citrus fruit, but as sharks. Oh, I'm getting so close to it. Ah, don't go over the edge. Oh, crap. Oh, and by the way, speaking of sharks, you can't make a shark protogen. Or primogen, actually. Because primogens are exclusively raptors. Meaning that my thing categorically cannot be a protogen. Or primogen. Oh, 
I think I'm gonna give up on this. I uh, I cannot seem to find the other uh, red coins. But we've also been going for um, over 45 minutes on this. So, I'll put it to uh, you guys what we swap out to. I can switch over to Mario 64, Mario Galaxy. Um, I can switch over to Mario Odyssey. I can do um, uh, Mario Kart, if you like. Or any of the 2D Marios that are on uh, Switch. We can do 64, we can do, uh, we can do Galaxy, we can do, um, Kart, Odyssey, I can throw in Mario Party, either of the ones on Switch, you know, uh, whatever you, uh, whatever you'd like. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do uh, some Mario Odyssey then, but we will take a quick break before that.
And we're back from the break. My, uh, hey, my con's working again. Alright. And we're playing some Mario Odyssey. And after, uh, I think, uh, if you're up for it, uh, implored, uh, we will, uh, hopefully do some, uh, Smash together. You know, uh, Super Smash Brothers. If you have any uh, multiplayer games, drop them in the uh, the chat, and I'll, I'll see if I've got them. The only thing that I find a little bit tricky in Mario Odyssey is uh, aiming Cappy. Because, you know, I'll think I'll be facing the right way, but no, it'll be the wrong way. Because I've got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I've got um, Mario Parties, both versions, I've got uh, Mario Maker 2, I've got um, Splatoon, uh, I've got Nintendo Switch Sports, which is, you know, I know it gets a lot of flack, but I actually think it's a quite fun game. Uh, let's see... I'm trying to remember what multiplayer games I've got. I've got Stardew Valley, which has uh, multiplayer support. Oh, I've already gotten this one. I see. Find Peach. Oh. 
Oh, how interesting. There's this stone warp pipe here. Okay, so there's got to be a warp pipe somewhere. Well, actually, some games don't actually distinct uh, distinguish between the servers. Um, like, for example, outside uh, with Splatoon 3, outside of a Splatfest, uh, the servers are all homogenous. Like, uh, I can play with my friend Nikki, who is uh, British, and I'm Canadian. You know, so, uh, I'm on North American servers, she's on um, British ones, and we, uh, we play Splatoon 3 together all the time. After I, uh, I finished my work here, and by that I mean, you know, get at least five, uh, five moons, um, we should definitely get Splatoon working. You know, I always love to, uh, to play games with friends.
Oh, okay. Is this where I'm supposed to go? Ah, this will be. All right, let's see how well we did. All right, well, we're gonna try this again. Damn, that sucks. Well, the uh, the stream will be here when you get back. You know, uh, no rush. Take your time. You know, uh, keep yourself safe. By stilton, I'm assuming you mean cheese. And I've never had cheese and broccoli soup. So I feel oddly concerned. But uh, take your time, there's uh, there's no rush, you know? Um, because of events you are aware of, uh, I, uh, I don't have anything to do today, so... You know, no need to rush, I'll be here for a while. better score when I put the eyebrow in, like, the complete wrong spot.
How did I get even worse? I'm even closer to the Goomba. Like, this is just ridiculous. How is this, which is pretty damn close to a Goomba, not an 80? Two moons of the five we're hoping to get today. <sighs> Let's set sail for Anwar, for Un Utro Kingdom. for Bowser's Kingdom. <laughs> Bowser's Kingdom of Bowser's Castle. Oh, 
Huzzah! A new area. Suboptimal. There's something down here.
Ha <laughs> ha! Got it. Now there's a little warp pipe here. I'm curious where this takes me to. That's not where I wanted to go. Yes, I bet there's at least one more Power Moon here as well. Oh, I bet it has something to do with that key. Try that again. Okay, so I think I've got an idea for how to tackle this. Someone just sent me a message and I was, uh, I was just checking. Damn it, Gromit. I've fallen and I can't get up.
Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you have acquired your soup ingredients. We so far have deposited our two stars and acquired one more, and we're on the process to acquiring another. Since you're back, I will just try and acquire this last star, and then we will uh, try and get Splatoon to work together. Alright, well that didn't work out, so we're just going to head back to the uh, Odyssey. Uh, actually, I think we can actually just go save. Alright, we're going to save. Alright, and I'm going to quickly pause thing. <laughs> All right, and we're back. <laughs> I didn't mean to uh, scare you with the uh, the break, but uh, yes, we are back. Alright, I'm going to pull up my friend code. Alright, which is one uh, seven one one three eight eight six six seven two one one. And if you send me a friend request, I will hop in and join. Or if you send me a friend request, I will accept it so that way we can uh, hop in and play some uh, Splatoon 3 together.
Ah, thank you for sending the friend request. I'm assuming you're NT24? Hey, we've got another viewer. Uh, third viewer, feel free to uh, throw your uh, name in the comments. Ah, you've also got Violet. Let's see, you've got Pikmin, you've got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The obvious, Splatoon 3. Nice, you've got a good games list. Oh yeah, that's totally understandable. Uh, to our third viewer, feel free to uh, comment. I write you lip sync. Drip ink. Current battle stages. All right, Flounder Heights, Hagglefish Market, Mincemeat Metalworks. Ooh, I like that. That's some good art. They finally added. The table turf is a thing that you can do. Alright, I've created the, uh, the room. Uh, feel free to join. Alright, so the invite should have been sent to, um, sent to ya. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, don't, don't fall downstairs. There's no need to rush about. Oh, please, please don't hurt yourself trying to find a place to, to play Splatoon 3. Oh, gee. Yeah, I was, I was just planning on wrapping it up after Mario Odyssey, but, you know, like, I figured, hey, if you wanted to play, uh, play a game, then... I'd, uh, I'd love to do that. I don't. I don't want you uh, hurting yourself trying to get somewhere.
But still, you know, be be careful. It it won't do to hurt yourself, you know. I head out, I mean, try and get into a match. into a match. Alright, so we're going to call the stream, by the way, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, which will be in 45 minutes. We've got a fairly decent lead on us by the looks of things, but we can push the tide of war, hopefully. Yeah, we're already starting to push them back. Yeah, we're pushing into their territory, I right. <laughs> Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's kick their ass. I said let's kick their ass and then I get my ass handed to me. By a safety. I'm assuming they mean so Tried to make it sound more username y like, so put me an A for software. Some software. Like hardware instead of hardware. Okay, that did not go great for us. No, we definitely lost that one, yeah.
<laughs> well, I didn't do much better. Here's a chance for redemption. On <laughs> both of our parts. Is it possible that the get quote won't lose a synth player is actually an neural network AI? And so literally a synth player? All right, let's see how that match shook out. Oh, hey, you know, not not bad, not bad. Hey, we even won. Ha <laughs> ha, how's that for the power of teamwork? It was really close, but we did manage to squeak out a victory.
Come on, let's do this. Ah, uh, crap, we got white. We gotta get back out as quick as we can. Quick as we can, quick as we can. Get back out on the field and do that fight in there, boy. Hey, everybody, get out there and do that fight in there. Get in there, boy. Oh, and see where you're at till it comes to your boo. Hey there, everybody, how's about you stop using the hoser eh, and come out there and give me what I need for you to do for me, eh, hey, everybody? It ain't like you're in danger anymore, so it stays where you're at, alright, everybody? Hey there, everybody, hey there, everybody. Moonshine there, boy. Now, this, this moonshine there is a strong spear note of man there, boy. Make it a little tiny berries, and you gotta turn your keys into the town hall. Once you turn your keys into the town hall, then you can drink as much as you like, just so long as you don't get too drunk. But you have to stay off the car, off the road for about a week after you had it. Because the strongest moonshine known to man there, boy. I'll leave you drunk till next Tuesday just for one glass. Well, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm doing a Newfoundlander accent, data boy. No, that's where I phrase the lake stays where you're at, it comes where you're too. Dude, I can also totally do, like, a BC accent, man. Because, like, we're high like California, but, like, We've got a Canadian Raising, my dude. And for those who don't know what a Canadian Raising is, it's that phenomenon which makes Americans think Canadians say oot and about instead of out and about. Because Americans say out and about. Whereas Canadians say out and about. About. That oh, oh, as opposed to about. It becomes about from a Canadian. About. Americans about. Canadians go. Americans go out and about. Canadians go out and about. Which Americans flanderize into going... <laughs> yeah. Which Americans flanderize into oot and a boot. Either by we're hitting oot and a boot. Also, the by isn't me saying either by, like either by sexual. It's me going, hey there, boy. But in Newfoundland, in Newfoundlanderese, it becomes eight or by, eight or by. Um, stays where you're at till it comes where you too means stay there. I'm coming. Um, um, and if you ever hear someone refer to Newfoundland as the Rock and the rest of Canada as the mainland, yeah, Newfoundland is the Rock. The rest of Canada is the mainland. You know, kind of an interesting thing is the perception is in America. The farther south you had, the more hickish and rural it gets. Whereas the stereotype in Canada is the more northward you get, the more backwards and hickish people get. 
and the more rural too. Because, you know, um, Americans, they, they want to live more north, a little bit more north, because, you know, the weather's more temperate. Canadians, we want to live a little bit more south because the weather's more temperate, closer to uh, the uh, Americans and Canadians on the border. Meanwhile, um, the further north you get, the colder and less hospitable, hospitable our weather gets, and the more south you go in the States, the more the uh, less temperate and uh, hospitable the weather gets until you've got places like Texas and Arizona, which are just like hot furnaces that'll melt your bloody face off. Uh, frankly, I find 30 degrees Celsius far too warm for any reasonable day. I get, you know, I get uncomfortable in 24 degree weather, so, you know, I don't think I'd last much... I don't think I last very long in Texas. Excuse me. Uh, as for other voices I can do... I can talk the claw from Inspector Gadget. He was voiced by Frank Walker. And I can do the voice. I'll get you, Gadget. I swear. However, do it. It's quite a rough voice. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. I can also sometimes do this, where I almost sound like I've got two voices going on. But it does a number on me. <coughs> ah. Ah, excuse me. Go fight, we will not compromise, for we know that the old lady must die. We shall live forevermore. We shall start a nuclear war. This is what my brain is like regularly, as it thinks of good things to do and say. Frankly, it's a wonder I'm as coherent as I seem to others to be.
you know what a weird political philosophy I've come across that a couple of people actually think we should return to is um, neo-feudalism. Or it should go to is neo-feudalism. Now, it's one thing for me as a fantasy D&D player to go, oh, neo-feudalism seems like such a neat idea for a sci-fi story. It's a whole nother idea for people to actually advocate a return to a sort of feudalistic society where, like, nobles are the only important people and everyone else is just meant to scrape by. I guess your, uh, your thing, either your internet booted you or something. Well, hey, we'll be alright, alright? No need to worry. Hey, it's, it's okay, you know? We can always hop back in another match, and you know, hey, it wasn't a huge defeat. So, you know, we can always get you back in another one. Okay. Well, how about we do a private battle? That way we can sort of do a one-on-one. -on -one. And do a true test of each other's metals. Let's blow this popsicle stand, eh? Ooh, this is Hammerhead. Hammerhead's my favorite map.
Oh, you got me there. I should have. I should have dodged your ult. I didn't. That's that's a my bad. Should have dodge rolled then too. <clears throat> you certainly got more board control than I do heading into the uh You got me. Can you retake enough though to beat me though? That's the question. I think you might have me. I think you might have me. Yeah, I think you've got me. It looks like you've got me. Hey, not bad. Alright, well, I'm uh, I'm glad to have played some Splatoon with you. Um, however, I've actually got to go. It seems I'm scheduled... I've actually got uh, a thing to do. So, this is timing-wise actually worked out. I've got an appointment in uh, 15 minutes. So, I've actually got to wrap this up. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, to anyone watching the replay, you can find me at nitsudge underscore nobel on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching the VOD, you can find me here on Twitch, at such underscore Nobel. And if you're watching this as a clip on Twitter, you can find uh, find me over at YouTube and Twitch, at such underscore Nobel. If you're watching from either of those platforms, you can find me at Twitch, at such underscore Nobel. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for making this an amazing stream, and have an amazing rest of your day.